So you may have heard that the GH5 autofocus firmware update happened again, and so naturally. So we got GH5 new firmware here. I have to cover your face so that it, okay. <laughs> GH5 new firmware, GH5 old firmware. Tom's behind the camera. Hello my friends, I hope you are doing well. Hope you had a fantastic weekend, all you wedding filmmakers. I hope you absolutely crushed your weddings. You know, crushed is never a way that I looked at weddings until we met Cody Warner, who if you don't know, is just like the most crazy positive person you've ever met. And one time we randomly got a text message from him that said, I knew you guys were crushing a wedding. Ever since then, we now crush weddings. Somewhere along the way, I realized that when I have a productive Monday in terms of planning what not just my day looks like, but what my week looks like, it really determines whether or not the week actually goes the way I planned. So your whole week starts in the first hour of your day. And for me, that looks like planning, emails, leads, and determining how this week can be the best ever. If I could go all the way back to when I first started my business, what I think I would change by far the fastest is I would have went to something like Tave, which is like my client management software earlier, because it is so incredible at being able to keep me on task with understanding where leads are, with where jobs are, where people need to pay me. It just really helps us as a company to stay focused and to know what everybody's doing and what we need to do. To my surprise, so many of you that watch a lot of my videos still don't know about that software. I I realize so many of you have already signed up for it, but there's always a link down below in my description that lets you sign up for Tave and get a 60 day free trial. This is not a paid sponsorship at all. It's literally a program that I use every single day, multiple times a day for every aspect of my business. And it literally is the reason that I was able to go full time into my business in the first place. Without that software, I probably wouldn't be full time in my business right now, to be honest, because of the fact that I was able to see in real time, like how much money I was making the rest of the year, how much money I can count on, how much money is possible versus what is actually coming in, when those leads are coming in, where leads are coming in from. But it literally can change your business because it can keep you organized and making sure that you follow up with leads, making sure that you know where leads are coming from, making sure that you can see what your overhead is, see how much money you have coming in, where you're spending too much money. Everyone that has started using that application has said that it has totally revolutionized their business in a huge way. So you should join it. It just works really, really well. They don't have to pay me to say that because I'm such a big fan of the product. So check it out. Tom, I never got a chance to like uh, introduce you. Properly introduce me. What do you what, <laughs> what do you do? How did you come across us? YouTube, for YouTube. sure. I mean, YouTube and then Instagram and I DM'd you. And we got coffee like, that was months ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got coffee a couple months ago. Just been talking ever since and now we're working on some projects together. What's your experience in video? Uh, I come from like a church media background, but now I've been yeah, freelancing for a year. So it's kind of all over the place with weddings, doing some corporate stuff and also like commercial, so. Sweet. Sweet. All right, dude, that was fun. Yep, great day. See you soon. Pablo. See you this weekend. Pleasure, man. Dude, I'll see you. Yep. I'll, see you I'll see you guys on Friday. Drive safe, yeah, see ya. Dude. Dude. All right, what are we doing? To show, show me, what are we doing today? Show oh, yeah, me, I gotta show me the shot of you. Is going on here. That's what we're going for. Something very similar to that. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> that was a perfect spot for it. So we're working on the second part of a Christmas like series of videos that we're doing for the Christmas Eve services. We did one the other day that I did in the main room with the lights off and the chair and all that. Really simple, but one thing we did that changed it up a little bit is if you ever are shooting and there is a wall behind you and you are using lights, that's always a very tricky situation. You also even experience this with a wedding. If you've ever shot like a, a, a speech and they want to be next to the table, but you want to light them and then you have that terrible shadow, you never want to see shadows on walls. It's just a super, super amateur hour move. Best way to eliminate shadows is you either have to diffuse the light which you can use the fusion on the front of the lights. You can soften the light with some other form. You could put a sheet over it if you want. Diffuse it like crazy, get it closer to the subject, or you just have to remove your subject from the wall and be a little bit further out. If the subject's further out from the wall, you're not gonna see shadows because obviously the shadow's gonna be falling before the wall. So. A couple of things to think about when you're lighting is just walls always play a factor that usually doesn't work out how you want. And if you actually want the wall in the frame, 
move away from the subject, change your lens so that it brings the wall closer in the actual compression of the lens. It'll still look like the same effect, but the wall won't even be close to your subject. Makes a huge difference. Let's take a quick walk here into Chelsea Market. This here is Chelsea Market. This is where you find all your goods. I might have told you before, we have a really cool church. Our church has always been a church that really, really believes in equipping parents to have a place that their kids want to go because when you get your kids to want to go to church and be a part of church, you obviously bring the parents with, so they do a great job here. Their kids' ministry is top-notch, and then they have a preschool, which my daughter actually goes to during the week. It's just, it's great. Shoot went well on to the next part of the day. I'm actually going to be on someone else's podcast now, so let's get that started. Long term, what gives me flexibility to actually determine what I want to do with my time? That was only one option to me. It was going full time into my business. Um, I worked for the, the three years before I went full time into making that possible, booking enough things, planning in advance, using good client management software that could help me like look at long term things of like, how much money will I make this year? How much will I, you know, what do I need to work on? You have to realize that if you're trying to even make the transition into full-time anything, especially full-time business being your, your own boss, to expect to live and be your own boss means you better be okay with knowing that there's a lot of work that is involved with that and a lot more work involved when you actually are currently working a full-time job and trying to make the transition. I was working 90 hours a week, 100 hours a week for the final year of full-time at the church because well, there's no other option. Like you you don't say tomorrow I'm going full-time and then you start working hard at the business. Like that just doesn't work. But I think the problem is it's really hard for people to find to, to make that happen. A lot of people want to go full-time into a business or they want to do whatever, and they're not putting in the work beforehand to do it. Um, if you want to be a full-time worship leader and you're not a full-time worship leader right now, what are you going to do? You're going to practice a ton. You're going to, you're going to go to every single church possible to try to like lead worship every once in a while. You got to practice, right? Like you got to, you got to build before you take a full-time job. And especially if you're the one responsible for your income of your family and your whole thing, doing your full-time business, you better work, <laughs> like work really, really hard or else you're going to go into a full-time business and be like, this is not really that fun because there's a lot more than I thought <laughs> was involved in this. It's incredibly rewarding once you're doing it because my wife and I, would be, we left last year, we were gone from December 15th to January 20th, traveling cross country to visit her family. Was, we did it simply because like I still worked every once in a while while I was out there, but we did it because it was the first time in 10 years that I've had that it was possible for me to leave during that time. We were with her family on Christmas for the first time ever. It just was an incredible thing that that's why I wanted to go full time. But it's a lot of work. There's the, you know the downsides of being the boss and being the entrepreneur is everything's your fault every single time. Um, if your employees are terrible, well, you hired them. If your if your clients aren't happy, well, that's your problem. Like it's you don't get to really check out. You have to work all the time to an extent, you know, if your clients aren't happy and you, and something needs to be taken care of at whatever time that is, it's your fault. <laughs> it's, and so sometimes it's important to realize that like, you're not necessarily cut out for the top position and maybe you're better off working with somebody who loves that side of things and does that more than the side that you, maybe you just love creating. Some people are really good cinematographers and shooters and editors. They're really good creative people, but they're horrible at running a business. I don't recommend that you run a business. I recommend that you pair up with someone who does and you be the creative because you can't have one. You can't, you can't build a business by only being good at creative. And you can't start a video production business by being really good at the business, but having no clue how to create. So you either need to partner with someone who can do what you can't, or you need to know that it's going to be a lot of work for you until you can hire more people that can like down the road. So it's, it's tricky.